In this chapter, we are going to discuss about some terminology and concepts of object oriented programming, also called as OOP or OOPS. Let me give you a heads up before you start to look at the lecture slides of this particular chapter. This particular chapter is going to make complete sense to you once you have finished learning C, which happens only in your 12th standard. So, if you do not understand most of what I am talking, do not really worry, okay, because it is just meant to give you an idea about different terminology and concepts. Once you learn C, all of what you are going to see in this chapter is really simple and easy to understand. But at this point of time, it is like me trying to describe the beauty of Switzerland to you without showing you any pictures or without actually taking you there. So it is left to your imagination. Having said that, I'll still make an effort to put it in very simple words so that you at least get the gist of what object oriented programming really is. So you need to come to this chapter only after you have finished programming constructs algorithms and flowcharts, then it's going to make a little bit of sense. The first thing is we need to ask ourselves is why did object oriented programming come into picture? Object oriented programming came into picture because there were certain shortcomings of the traditional approach of developing program, which was using the procedural or structured programming approach. Now, all of us know programming involves both code and data. So let me tell you what is code and what is data. So suppose I have to calculate area of a triangle using Hero's method. I will need the three sides or the length of the three sides A, B, C. This constitutes my data. Then my logic will say, ask the user to enter the values of three sides and I read it into three memory locations with the name A, B and C. Then I need to calculate the half perimeter, which is the sum of A plus B plus C divided by 2. And then finally, I calculate area as a square root of S into S minus A into S minus B into S minus C. And then I display, write, or print the area. This stands for assignment in the sense the calculations on this side are copied onto the memory location on the left hand side. So all these steps represent the algorithm or logic. ABC represents the data. But when we were writing code, our focus was mostly on the logic of the code. It was very little on the data. The problem with such an approach is when you develop large projects, it is prone to a number of errors. The code cannot be reused in some other project. It is very difficult to maintain and it is expensive to maintain. So these are the drawbacks of the conventional way of development using C, Pascal, Python, COBOL, not Python, sorry, C, Pascal, COBOL and so on. So here the problem was we were focused on the logic, whereas if you look at it, logic has no meaning without the existence of data. You have only code because there is data. Suppose I tell you print your marks card okay of all the students of your class for that I need what is the most important thing I need data of the scores of each student without data there is no point in me writing the code so the conventional way of writing code emphasized the code over the data now in order to overcome the shortcoming of the conventional way of programming object oriented programming came into picture in object oriented programming, the focus is both on data and code. So what happens is the data and code is combined into a single grouping called as the object. So let me tell you what is the object through an example. So here if you see, I have three groups of data, code, data, code, data and code. Let us say in the first grouping, the data is of all the students name, address, age, weight and marks of each subject. So this is marks plus information of the student. In the second group, I have a code 
which uses data from here and calculates the rank and percentage of each student. And finally, I have a third group which uses the data of maybe this as well as this to mail the scores or the ranks of students to their parents. So what I have is I have three groups here. Each group has its own code and data. So this grouping of data and code or functions is called as an object. This is one object, second object and third object. Now you will understand why this approach is used in the next one or two videos as to what is the advantage of this approach. This particular data which contains the marks and personal information of the student okay, belongs to object X. This is called as this data is called as the characteristic of this particular object X. Characteristics means it attributes like marks, weight, height and all. And if somebody requests this data, I have certain code which takes this data and sends it here or here. This code is known as the behavior of the object or also known as method or function. Now, we have talked about top-down approach to program design and bottom-up approach to program development. Object-oriented programming uses a bottom-up approach to program development. It talks about how a big project can be broken down into a number of objects and how the objects can help out each other to find the solution to the complete problem. Now a few things are important. This data can only be accessed by functions in object X. This data can only be accessed by functions in object Y. This data can only be accessed by functions in object Z. So here the data is local to object X, the data here is local to object Y and the data here is private or local to object Z. So this is what you really understand or mean by object oriented programming. All right. In the next session, we'll try to expand on this and go into a few more aspects of what are the characteristics of object oriented programming.